Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. I recently did a video on how I like to EQ acoustic guitar, and I got this comment on that video. Caleb says he'd like me to show how I would approach EQing electric guitars for rhythms, leads, solos, and how all those frequencies are balanced and not interfering with one another. The question is about mixing heavy electric guitars, and we'll get to that in just a second. But the answer is bigger than just guitars. It really applies to all of mixing. Why? Because mixing a song is like making a sandwich. The bread is important, as are the toppings and condiments. But I don't need the same amount of meat as I have bread, usually. And I certainly don't need the same amount of mustard as I have meat, right? At some point, if I don't have enough toppings and condiments, all I taste is bread. And if I have way too much mustard, all I taste is mustard. So how do we figure out how to balance all of these things, both in our sandwiches and in our mixes? Well, it comes by asking yourself questions like, what are the core frequencies of this particular track? Or what role does this track play in the mix? Okay, confession, I don't actually ask these questions out loud, but they're a good representation of my thought process when I go to mix a track. What is the essence of this track? What are the essential frequencies of this track? So a couple examples, kick drum. Essential frequencies, 50 to 200 hertz, and then maybe 5K for the low end and the snap. Bass guitar, maybe it's 40 to 250, 300 hertz, and then a little bit at 1K. Uh, electric guitars, maybe it's 150 up to 400 for the warmth, and then 3 to 5K for the crunch. Those are the, kind of the essential frequencies. So whatever I'm mixing, I don't want you to memorize these specific frequency ranges. If you just wrote them down, huh, shame on you, I'm kidding. If you just wrote them down, that's not the point. The point here is rather than memorizing the specific frequencies and the specific EQ moves, what would be more beneficial for you is to internalize this process of listening, identifying what is good about this track, what do I wanna hear in the final mix from this track, and then find ways to make sure that's possible. I love mustard, but I don't wanna only taste mustard at the end of my sandwich. I like mustard because of the way it interacts with the other flavors. So in mixing, we wanna make sure I can hear those essential flavors of the guitar, but also hear the other pieces as well because we're trying to make a complete, beautiful, fun to listen to sandwich. <laughs> okay, let me show you this as an example using electric guitars. All right, here are the drums, bass, and some of the electric guitars from a song. So we're coming out of the chorus into verse two. I've muted all the keyboards and vocals and everything else so we can just focus on drums, bass, and electrics. Here's what that sounds like. Sorry, I had to get to that three major chord. It makes me happy. Okay, so here are the electric guitars we hear. So the drums and bass are sounding like this. Let's just start right there at verse two. So we really can't have a discussion about electric guitars without even at least mentioning bass. It is like the lowest of the electric guitars in the song. And the tone of the bass really determines what I'm going to do with the rest of the guitars. So I like my bass to have a lot of grit um, and to have a nice amount of low end and low mids because it's the lowest of the guitars. And then I want there to be a little bit of overlap with that and the rest of the guitar. So I end up going with a bass tone kind of like this most of the time. So we got some buzziness in the top end, but still plenty of thick, woolly low end as well. So I'm going to go from left to right and kind of walk you through. These three are kind of my rhythm tracks. This is a lead track, and this clean track is also kind of a lead track. So the idea here is for tracks that are more core to the song, I like to make sure they have the most frequencies. So I want to make sure they're the warmest and... As I get to lead parts, I probably take away a little more and more low end because I want them to stand out a little bit more, which gets to the question that, that I 
read to you at the beginning of this video. But let's start with the rhythm guitar. So here's what the rhythm guitar sound like with no plugins. So these are just how I recorded them straight into the amp. It's a I think it's a Telecaster with two different drive pedals, one on the left, one on the right. Um, two takes. Here's what that sounds like. So these are the kind of the core. I want them to have, I don't want them to be so thin that I don't get the warmth out of them. So I would say the core frequencies here are obviously the crunchiness up at three to 5K, but also there's some warmth down there in the low mids that I don't want to lose. However, there is some stuff going on. If I throw an EQ on here, we'll see it. Actually, let's throw the uh, spectrum meter on here. So if we look at this, we can see there's, there's obviously, you can kind of see all the frequencies that are there. Got a good amount of stuff happening down here. Now, I don't like to mix with a spectrum analyzer on just to give you a visual. Um, but the way I ended up mixing these was to remove some of that deep low end because kick drum and bass guitar had that covered. So that ended up sounding like this. So if you listen carefully, you'll hear, it's like I took a woolly blanket off of the guitars. Before they had this kind of low end going whoa, 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 whoa. That wasn't really helping anything. And then watch when I kick on this fat channel here, you'll hear I remove some of that low end that was excessive and wasn't really helping so that I can hear the warm mid-range frequencies and the bright top end frequencies. You hear it especially when I turn the plug-in back off, this, this almost like this humming sound came through. That was just kind of hanging out. Just all that's gonna do is make my mix muddy. I don't need it, that sound isn't essential to these guitars, so I got rid of them. So then the third rhythm guitar track is this one. Listen to what it sounds like when I turn all the plug-ins off. It's pretty, pretty gross. So I'm instantly taken back to like Bush circa, what, 96 or something. Anyway, um, very cool fuzz sound, but I don't need all this low end. I really just need that kind of for a fuzz sound and to blend in with everything in this song. The role of this fuzz was to give me just some more, a different kind of crunch than I had with my other guitars in the bass. So that ends up sounding like this. When I roll off all that low end, you can see the EQ there. Now the fuzz sounds like this. I don't need it to have fundamental frequencies in line with the bass guitar because the bass guitar has the low end covered. I need it to kind of just give me kind of a mid-rangey fuzz sound, which is the sound that I heard kind of while I was recording it. And then I realized, well, there's a lot of low end there. Let's take care of that. So blended with the two guitars, we get this sound. Listen to what happens here. I'm going to play this again. Watch what happens when I turn this EQ off. The fuzz almost literally disappears. The volume hasn't changed all that much, but we changed the arrangement, the mix of frequencies, and now we can't hear it anymore because it's getting covered up by the other guitars. Um, and it's just an EQ thing. Check it out. We removed the frequencies that didn't matter and accentuated or emphasized the ones that do, and that's what we ended up with. Uh, here's the lead guitar part for this section. So it's already screamy and bright. Uh, has a decent amount of warmth because I like my leads to still have some warmth to them. But here's what the original track sounded like. You can hear that on that third note, it kind of, that same sort of woo -woo -woo sort of sound is there. Woo -woo. It's just, I don't know what it is, resonance of the guitar, I don't know, don't really care, but it's too much. So we use the EQ that we used on our main guitars, which helped a little bit, and then we added a fat channel to this one. 
to bring it a little more forward. So this one, it's not super thin, but we can see we took out some more low end, gave it a little extra warmth at 360, um, and allowed those high frequencies that were already really loud in the raw recording to just come through so it's nice and bright over everything. So we hear this meow, meow, this ding dong doorbell sound over everything else. <laughs> So what I'm not saying, just to be clear, uh, if you're with me this far, you may think what I'm saying is, well, it's a lead guitar, so really all I need are those upper frequencies, so I should do something like this. That's not necessarily what I'm saying. Maybe some mixes, that's exactly what the lead needs to sound like to get it to cut through because you really don't need this extra stuff. Um, but for me, it was more something like, let's get rid of the super extra low end so that we have a more kind of normal sounding guitar part, but we don't have any extra frequencies that we don't need that might make things muddy. And then here's another lead that comes in during this verse, and this is a very clean guitar. Um, and you'll notice the raw recording of this. already a cool sound, like a very like fendery sort of a sound. So I just click on, it's actually the same EQ that I used on the main guitars, gets rid of any excessive low in there and allows it to just kind of sit in the mix. So for this one, since it's a cleaner part, I need kind of the spanky top end of it, but also need that warmth because I'm going for like kind of a blues-ish sort of a riff. It's a nice break from the heavy guitars in this chorus. So it needs to be loud enough, but it also needs to maintain both kind of the mid-range warmth and the upper frequency snap so we can hear the pick on the strings. <laughs> Okay, I hope that was helpful for you. I really do, as much as I wanna show you, hey, move your EQ here, and move this here, and move this here, and you have a great mix, I can't, because what you mix will be different from what I mix. Even if we're in the same tracks, all your decisions will make you make different decisions based on where the levels are right now. So you really have to embrace the concept and learn to listen critically and make these decisions on your own. I'm not saying that as a cop-out, I'm saying it as that's really the best advice I can give you. It would be easier for me to just give you like the exact things to do and say go and do this, it wouldn't be best for you. What's best for you is to learn this process. So hopefully this has given you a little bit, bit of an insight into how I've kind of developed my thinking around this and I hope it helps you as you develop your own mixing process. By the way, I have a guide for mixing called the Five Step Mixing Guide. It's the same concept, I don't tell you where to put the tracks and what to put on each track, but I tell you how to think about the mixing process in such a way that helps you go from beginning to end and not get too lost along the way. If you haven't gotten your free copy, uh, you can do that absolutely free at 5stepmix.com. And bonus, it gets you signed up for my email newsletter, which is pretty fun. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.